Hello everyone and thank you for stopping by Day Up Chanel's 40th World where we do soap opera reviews and pretty much anything else we want to review at the time I'm trying to uh, tell someone about it. Uh, we're going to go on to the one that uh, aired on Friday, May 5th, uh, 2017. I know I've been gone, but I've been doing, um, you know, some job related stuff as well as some private business stuff that I'm trying to um, capitalize on. And I'm just sorry I didn't get back with you, but I had to binge on my soap operas to try to catch up with what was going on. But I see I hadn't missed too much. Uh, Thomas Steele acting a fool, but he came in as the thoroughbred I knew he was. I was so tired of him acting all whiny and thinking somebody just took so much advantage of him and saying that, you know, um, what's her name? Dog, I forgot her name that quick. Um, uh, who's Sally? Could have, uh, told him, could have. She could, he could have helped her. I'm like, okay, Thomas, I'm tired of you talking that. Father Leader Thomas actions. You could have also said, can I help you? What do you need? You know, this, that, and the third. You could have blew your own horn too. It ain't necessarily that the woman has to always ask for help. If you saw her drowning and you knew she was drowning, damn, throw her a lifeline. But you came through strong, strong and bold at the end of the episode. But basically, it was about Sally paying her dues, correcting something that she knew was wrong. And I don't know why Graham didn't throw herself on the mercy of the court and tell the judge that's going to be presiding and hearing the case why she didn't go on and say, you know, I was the mastermind. My granddaughter didn't want to do it, but I did it. And, you know, let everybody feel sorry for her for a change and not throw her butt under the bus. And, you know, just get Sally some heat off Sally. You know what I'm saying? Because she was stronghold into making the decision to do what she did. And it was mostly because the family had instructed her to do so. So I was really hoping and kind of sideway praying that, you know, Grams, even though I know it's fictitious, it's a story, you know, and they're acting out these things. But, you know, you can't be caught up with your family's drama in real life and you taking a hit. For something that you really didn't want to do. But you were kind of strongholded into doing. Because your family felt you should uphold them. And twist the law to their liking. You know what I'm saying? So Graham did not stand up and do the darn thing. Saul has definitely been a major player. Uh, in ensuring that his salary didn't spend one night in jail. And I was like, well, where's Saul get all this money from? <laughs> Trying to bail somebody out. And CJ didn't even try to get his cousin out of jail. With all that money, I know he's sitting on. That's a darn shame. You got to get somebody that's not your family member. That really serves and treats you like a family member. But they're not biologically related to you. Now, what did that tell you about the world now? Okay. You, just because you're born into a family don't really make your family. You know what I'm saying? So, that was just a good scene that the writers brought in and played it uh, up to that point. And let me see what else I had to talk about. Uh, Ridge still telling Brooke he's her destiny. They're destined to be together. I don't even know how he found out Brooke was at El DiGiorno. DiGiorno or uh, whatever the damn restaurant's called. But, uh, you know, she's sitting there patiently waiting for Bill. And then he uh, calls himself showing up and sees her. So he's going to join her impromptu. And I'm like, now, Brooke, this was your time now, Logan Strong, to tell him, ah, that space is not for you. Could you get up and, and remove yourself from that seat before my real man comes? Okay. That's what she could have said or the writers could have, you know, put in there. But they didn't, of course. So we're just at where we're at. So he just calls himself going on, uh, what do you call it, uh, begging her. To come back to him and <laughs> I'm like and end up in the same fatality of a relationship once again Rich no let it die let it die let it die we don't bury y'all what five six times over the relationship I mean so um you know Rich is just still pining for his love and all this crap and you know Brooke is ready to turn on the waterworks again. Like, where's the Visine people? Because it seems like she's been having a crying moment. 
But thank the Lord that didn't happen. And Dollar Bill showed up and just like, what are you still? What are you doing, man? <laughs> Why are you harassing my bride to be my brook? Not your Logan, but my brook. Okay. And I'm kind of getting tired of the storyline, too, of two men fighting over Brooke, just like her sister Katie had said prior to her going to the restaurant to meet Bill at. They were sitting down having a conversation about, you know, uh, having a drama-free life and she moving on with the man that she uh, needs to be with and this, that, and the third. And Katie was saying, well, okay, if you're trying to remove yourself from drama, why do you keep putting yourself in drama? You know what I'm saying? Just tell Ridge what it is and, you know, be gone, be done with it. And that was the end of the episode that aired on uh, yesterday because I'm taping it in the wee hours of the morning at 108. Uh, he called himself giving her or saying to her, do you really want me to walk out of your life? Is this really what you want? Is there no spot? in your heart for me. I'm like, come on, Rich. Everybody always going to have a soft spot for somebody they used to care for. That's a given. Okay? So, no. We ain't going to play up on those ideas. Um, you trying to throw her away. But Bill was like, you know, just tell this joker once and for all you're done with them. And then she's looking, you know, behind Bill's back, you know, making all these facial expressions like, I really don't want to do this to him. He is the father of my child and all this crap. I'm like, get over it, bro. Get over it. You put more drama in your life than need not be. I want to give Bill a chance because you've definitely been married to uh, old Rusty Dusty. I don't know how many times and I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of the writers insinuating y'all should be together. But anyway, that's just a foolery scene. We move on from there. And we go from probably the first part of the scene when Thomas is having reservations uh, with Steffi trying to put Sally in jail, you know, 15 years. And Sally and her crew over there meeting with the uh, attorney as well as the judge to uh, decide a pretrial date to hear all this evidence and that's mounted up against Sally when it should be mounted up against Saul and Grams because they the one pretty much did the crap. And it, we kind of implemented it and set it in motion before Sally knew what was going on, you know. But Sally's not telling all of that. But uh, just a piss poor scene all together. Um, and then you have Thomas and telling Steph that she, she deserved jail time. I mean, she deserved to lose, but not on the scale of taking her life from society and then jailing her up like a caged bird, you know, like. Don't keep the Mockingbird cage, don't let it sing. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, they sitting over there and the judge just said, Oh, you're not gonna get fifteen years because you never had an offense against you. That's one good point. Uh but you're looking at five, three at the most, if you you know, go in there and behave yourself. We'll knock two more years off this. So I'm like, see that's the judicial system. Just give the person what they're supposed to serve and include all of that uh, forgiveness time and, and, you know, serving time, this, that, and third, and just be done with it, you know. But uh, basically, that's pretty much what it was. And uh, I'm like, if, if the crime fits two or three years, just say two or three years up front, that's it. Don't be, you know, making somebody's scared, talking about 15 years, and you know she ain't did nothing that really warranted. I mean, you're taking the company from her, you're taking the assets, that's enough. You know, it ain't like she killed somebody. I mean, come on. My goodness. But anyway, Thomas is having some ill feelings about it, and he's discussing it definitely with um, about to pay for Steph. Talking about, this is what my, our grandmother and our father want, I mean, our granddad and our father want. She has to go to jail. I'm like, they ain't heard nobody say put her in jail. They said she needs to be stopped. She needs to not have the money. She needs to not have the company. But I ain't really heard nobody say, let's put her in jail and be done with it. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to help her. But anyway, you know, bottom pay for Steph is sitting there trying to toe the line. And I'm like, okay, if something was done to you like that, would you want somebody to really toe the line on your behind? No, you wouldn't. So uh, that was pretty much it, um, guys. Um uh, you know, Thomas, like I said, he showed up and showed out at the very end because it was looking kind of bleak. Was looking like she was going to serve him for years and she had to toughen up. 
And it probably made her worse off if she did have to go 15. Uh, probably would have been a totally changed individual and she probably would have gotten better while she was in jail. But of course, you know, that's not how the writer's going to write it. And hopefully she'll come out smelling like a rose, put grounds and soil up in there for two or three years, and then everything will be set. <laughs> but we do know that's not going to happen, right? But uh, yeah, for her um, losing the Spectre Design House, unless Zenday is going to put his money where his mouth is and buy it and maybe change the name, or buy it and keep the name. I don't know. But um, that would be an interesting twist. And then maybe bottom paid for. We'll have something to think about. <laughs> and Thomas will have something to think about. Never um, mess with another semi forester Because again. Zende is more of a forester by adoption. And being that his mother is a true forester. And really Thomas and... Uh, bottom paid for Steffi, they are not true forces. They're Moronis by biological means. So that's going to be interesting to see if. Huh? Mm -mm, I took it down. Uh, basically, to see the tides turn because technically the ones that are calling all the shots are the ones that are not foresters. You know what I'm saying? Hence, Steffi. So, because Ridge is a Maroni by birthright, by biological bloodline, okay? So, once I'm sure the mess that comes out that Ridge was messing with uh, his step, well, his adoptive father, you would once say, uh, wife, it's going to blow back for when he did mess with Brooke and all that stuff. So, it's going to have some blowback. And it may be in turn, in turn that Zenday may be on top this time. Like I said, T-Dot, he crazy. He crazy. I don't know where they writers got him putting, you know, a fence or a wall up between them fighting as siblings. Because that's a hot mess right there, too. And he coming out from being a photographer, talking about he wanted to design. I'm like, boy, if you want to go sit yourself down somewhere, and the writers need to be knocked on the head as well. Then, uh, finally, we can touch on uh, them hopefully bringing up a scene where uh, Sally makes a comeback in the design world, even if she has to start from scratch. Or maybe it might be a penalty that she can't necessarily practice anymore. I don't know. I really don't know. But however it goes, uh, it should be brought out that Bill Spencer was the one, Dollar Dollar Bill, uh, wrote up that bogus um type of um review and jared really didn't have anything to do with it and jared needs to come forward and tells uh or tell um sally that so she can get her confidence back in creating her designs uh her designs and not ones that were stolen uh from anybody really so yeah while he's turning it up, trying to focus his time on following Ridge and Brooks be um, you know, behavior and uh, they be behaving themselves, he need to be trying to figure out uh or somebody need to drop down on him. I know it's not gonna be Wyatt, because Wyatt agrees in making money, uh, pretty much. On what his father is pretty much teaching him. And maybe he'll have the business one day. And still run it like Dollar Bill. Is trying to run it. Or he is running it I say. But so, I mean, maybe Liam will have some moral. Uh, what do you call it? Morality to kind of shake why up. If they had to succeed Dollar Bill. Because he just don't got. You know, beside himself here and there. But interesting, interesting nevertheless to see what comes out of that. All right, everybody. So that was my review of Bold and the Beautiful that aired on Friday, May 5th. Hope you enjoyed it. I did a little twist. I didn't go point by point or scene by scene. I kind of just mixed it up a little bit. So talk to you soon for next episode of the Bold and the Beautiful that will air on Monday, the 8th. And I'll get back with you, okay? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.